Um, so moving along to the two forms, which I've included the um, HUD statement and the OLTA. Now, as many of you probably know, the laws changed the, with the trade regulation. Um, we went from using a HUD, which was a um, three-page form, to the OLTA. So I'll start with the HUD, because we still do use that um, for ca cash transactions. Um, also, if the, it's a commercial deal, we use that. Um, so that's the, the longer 8.5 by 14 form. And this form's a lot easier to understand. Uh, the government, when they stepped in and they changed the form from the HUD to the ULTA, uh, what they were saying was that the consumer can't understand the form. They, they took the two, two, three pages with the signature page and made it a four-page document. Definitely not easier for the consumer to understand. It's, uh, you'll hear from a lot of your customers, they don't know what they're looking at. So if I can go over it and just you know, help you guys understand, hopefully you can help them understand. But on the HUD, so the, uh, the longer form, we can, we, what we do is it's two sides. The, the left hand side is uh, for the buyer. And at the top, what we do in the top, we uh, show the debits, what they're going to be paying out. So that's under um, J. We start with the sales price of the property. And to that, we're going to add the next uh, line, which is 103, and that's the closing charges, which is the second page. And we go over that with the uh, consumer after we show them this page. So that's their closing charges, which would include their lender's charges, um, if it's a commercial, um, if it's a cash deal, it's going to be uh, title charges, uh, survey, uh, taxes, any, any fees that they would have. Uh, the next uh, items, uh, 106 and 107, those are adjustments because the seller uh, has paid some items which we have to show on here for the buyer to reimburse the seller. So on line 106, that's the, the tax adjustment. It's going to run from the date of closing until the end of the quarter in which the seller paid. So on, on this form we have here, they paid through uh, the third quarter. So that's reimbursing uh, the seller for that. Uh, the next line item is the sewer. So again, we're reimbursing for what the seller has paid. And on this transaction, it was um, paid through 831, so we, we show that amount. The total of any figures that are on, on, on that column are under line 120. So that's the total what they're going to pay out with all their closing charges and reimbursements. Um, under section 200, this is going to be any credits they have. So it's going to show the deposit, which is what we have on this transaction. Um, again, if it was a commercial, the loan would show on uh, line 204. If there is a um, concession, a seller concession, uh, which would be in the contract, that would show on line 206. And then down the bottom there, we just subtract one from the other. So it's going to be the top column, which is what they, they are due to pay, subtracting the deposit, and that's the amount on line 303 would be what the uh, buyer would need to bring to closing. And if they ever ask you, um, most of the time we send it to them, but if they ever ask, uh, that would have to be payable to Atlantic Shore Title, and it would need to be a certified or cashier's check or a wire, which we could provide wire instructions. Um, a big thing with wires uh, now with fraud, we send out our paperwork and we do put on there that um, they will not be contacted from anyone, uh, even from us, changing the wiring information for them to send it somewhere different. So um, we're really cautious on that. Um, any questions on that? I do. So are you still emailing wiring instructions or are you faxing it now? We are wire, uh, emailing still wiring emailing? instructions, okay. yes. Yeah. And again, we, we have a form attached to it stating that we will not contact them and change it. Okay. It's never going to change. If you ever get a call from a frantic buyer saying uh, the title company told us to send it somewhere different, no, we would never do that along with any other title company. Um, but that's There's where major problems with this going on. We've yeah, been dealing with it for a year where they are uh, hacking realtors' emails and they're watching the communication between us and, and you. And they know when the closing is going to take place. And we've actually had people reach out and pretend to be one of you 20 minutes after the closing is done saying, thanks for the great closing. By the way, instead send my seller's money too with new instructions. And it's pretty eerie because I almost feel like they're looking in the window at us, but really they're just watching the communication 
between all of us where they're meeting and they're just changing one letter in the email address sometimes and responding, setting up all new information. But we've been dealing with it a lot. There's a title company was just defrauded of $800,000 um, in July where they redirected the seller's proceeds. And boy, once it's gone, it's gone. So we don't gone. prefer wiring. You know, wiring is tricky these days. We've even considered check and we're not doing it any longer. We've right. considered because we wire a lot of money. We, we wire seller's proceeds. We wire the mortgage payoffs. And we've actually had meetings recently thinking, should we stop wiring for in the short run and just overnight checks? You know, it seems to be we didn't have those problems when we were overnighting checks. But it's a big, it is a big issue. Mm -hmm. Do I have another question? Yeah. Do your wiring instructions change like for instance uh, maybe six months ago I had you guys send me wiring instructions in a it, it was a, a PDF that I attached to send to a seller would those instructions that I have still be the same they're gonna have a five different file number on there okay. because they, they are per case basis okay so I always have to ask you for so the ask, wiring yes it's the best thing is to ask for us because it will have our uh, uh, the file number and the borrower's name or seller's name on there. okay thank you yeah so better to, to answer that. Any other questions? So let me be clear, cashier's check and what else? Cashier's or certified check, yes. And we're hoping, because years ago, we went from having problems with checks, because there were, there were fraudulent checks running around. So they went from changing it from you know, bringing a certified cashier's check to wires, and now they're they're hitting those. Yeah. Follows the money. Yeah. Are we going yeah. back to cash? We going back to uh, cash you know, around that? Yeah. Oh, not not over ten thousand. I remember those days too. That's scary. Not over ten thousand. Then you put extra people around. What? Well, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. We used to take cash. Yeah. People yeah. People yeah. come to closing with big paper bags that they help. You know, they had they had the money under their mattress or something. They would come to closing with big, and then the IRS stopped. Taken over a certain yeah. amount of cash. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Used to make copies of it, right? I can't believe yeah. that's right. Yeah. 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 People yeah. would bring yeah. in a yeah. big yeah. bag of money. Yeah. 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 So, are you saying, like, if, if someone redirects a wire? Yeah. So, in this case of this title company in Avalon, um, they wired the money. It's gone. They're on the hook for it. It's their loss. The title, the title company's loss. The title company's loss. Now, so the title company is responsible for that loss? Yes. Now, it depends on how it goes down. In this particular case, the title company went, bit the fraudulent line there, and wired the money to God knows where. Um, so yeah, so it's it's but you have insurance for that, right? Well, you, know, make that yeah. you know, the underwriter. <laughs> if our underwriter feels that we did not, we were not careful enough, they could say, no, we're not going to cover you. It has to come out of you. You have to pay it yourself. So you know, it depends on all the details as anything. <laughs> Very scary. Eight hundred thousand. So on the other side of the first page of the book <laughs> is the seller side, oh, yeah. and it's sort of the same, except for starting at the top, it's going to be a credit for the seller. There was a debit from the buyer. So we start with the sales price of property. They're gonna they're gonna get that, and then we just show the credits that we did for the the taxes and the sewer. So they're gonna get those credits, and we total those figures up, which are under line four twenty. And for their side, we're going to deduct closing charges, which is on 502. So we do the simple the math down the bottom there, where we subtract one from the other, and then 603 shows the amount that's going back to the to the seller. And you know, at closing, uh, for, at closing, usually they obtain a check. Uh, a lot of times, sellers don't um, come to closing anymore, and we do wire. We do wire the money. We do, with all the, again, the fraud going on, we do um, call the seller. So if, if you ever have a seller that's a little upset because the title company called them the day of closing to go over, verify the wire instructions, which they give us ahead of time, it's just a, a, a check that we have to have in our system uh, yes. to make sure that we have the right uh, wire information that we're wiring the uh, money to. We call to like a known phone number so that we know it's a no number. If you're the listing agent, you gave us the seller's number. It's a number we have on file that we call. And can I just go back to when you were saying who's at fault? It does depend on the circumstances because there was another case 
where and it's good when Deb says talk to your people so that they know not to uh, listen to changes, where a buyer in a transaction um, received, and the buyer was going to wire money in for settlement. It wasn't 800000 but it was still all the money the buyer had. I forget, $25,000. And someone hacked someone's account and asked him, no, don't send your money there. Please send your money here. And he did. So in that case, the buyer was out the money. The buyer was out the money because he bit the false email. So it was devastating because then they couldn't buy the property. Jeez. And they're out the money. Mm -hmm. That's so sad. Yeah, it's just happening take, a lot. They can't just, like, if you're dealing with a certain, if you have a, an account with a certain bank, mm -hmm. they can't just, somebody from your office is going. Mm -hmm. Wiring from the bank? Mm -hmm. Or put it into your account. I mean, we... We just we love checks right now, so <laughs> right. if a buyer can bring a cashier's check or a certified check to the table, that's probably the safest way because they have it, they bring it, we have it, we deposit it. Right. Those wires are just dicey right now. Yeah, very scary. Uh, do you have any questions on the seller side? Just one question on the realty transfer tax. Can you just give an overview of how that's calculated and when that might be? Done? It's a little different on the transfer tax. It's uh. A certain amount per thousand, so it's not. Um, I, I believe it goes up to 150 for yes. the first. So it's it's staggered. So I believe the uh, first uh, 150 thousand sales price uh, is 350. Yes, yeah, yeah. It's like layered, three it's, tiers. And it goes. There's a deduction for senior citizen. So um, if they're senior citizen, they would have to be their primary residence. Um, they have to live there at the time. Um, and they have to be 62 years uh, older. Um, they could get senior citizen, um, but it is it's staggered. So we have a chart which I can always send you. Okay, it's yeah. pretty easy to just okay. look at it. It goes by, goes by the sales price, and it will tell you exactly what it is. Okay. Which is nice to have when you're computing figures for them. Mm -hmm. So if you give me your card after, yeah, I'll send it to you. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we, they're the bottom lines of what the buyer needs to bring and then what the um, seller is getting back. And if we flip over to the second page, um, starting at the top, we'll go over again the left hand side of the column is the buyers. So on this transaction, it's a cash deal, there are no lenders charges, but if it was a commercial, there would be uh, charges in the first uh, 800 column up into the, um, the 1000 column. That's where all the lenders charges would be. Um, so in this one we start in the title charges, which uh, line 1101, that's the settlement fee. On this particular transaction, the uh, seller was a bank, and uh, banks will not pay the settlement fee. So that's why you're going to see the settlement fee, I don't know if you're used to it, but it's a little higher than normal. Uh, usually that would be $200 on a cash transaction, but the, the seller won't pay it, so the buyer gets to pay the whole thing, luckily. Um, so that's the first fee, the settlement fee. Further down, um, you go to the title insurance. So that's including um, the title insurance premium fee, um, any endorsements or tax searches, any fees that we put out are included in that amount. Uh, further down is the reporting fee, so that's to record the deed. And then the last fee would be the sewer. So uh, we were um, charging the buyer for the next sewer fee. So that way, what happens is when they purchase the property, um, if they purchase it after the uh, third quarter it, or during the third quarter amount, the next tax bill they won't receive because that already went out to the old seller. So we like to collect it to make sure that they don't miss it, that they because they won't get a tax bill or a sewer bill. So we like to collect it to make sure that they, they are not, you know, going to incur any extra fees on that. Okay, and then we total that figure, and that's the one that we brought over to the front page, the closing charges. Do you guys have any questions? Yeah, so this HUD is sent on the closing day yet, like, is there a way to receive it before? We do send it before, before. and that's one of the um, topics I wanted to touch on. I'm mm -hmm. glad you asked. Uh, we would like, we like to receive any invoices, um, if you guys have any invoices, any, um, your commission statement, uh, transaction fees, if you have a transaction fee for Keller, any invoices that you have, if you can send them to us a week prior to closing. On this transaction right here, it was cash, which is not as difficult, but when we start going over the Ulta, 
When you had a lender involved, now that um, they put in these new, um, the new uh, trade regulation, the lender has to disclose that CD, which is sort similar to the Ulta, but it's their conversion for the lender. They have to disclose that three days prior to closing. So we ask that we have all invoices, any attorney's fees, um, uh, a, at least a week prior to closing. So that way we, we have to go back and forth with the lender and balance. We have to come to the conclusion and say, yes, we both balance because we have both we both have fees on the settlement statements. Mm -hmm. We need to balance. So if we have all your invoices and everything on there, the, the tra transaction will go smoothly. If we don't, we might have to tell you, I'm sorry, but we can't put the termite on because we didn't have it ahead of time to disclose. So um, we do get those out um, as quickly as we can. A lot of times when there's um, a lender involved, they are the ones who are to, to be disclosing the amount to the buyer. Um, we cannot send you the um, closing disclosure. What we will send you is the Ulta, which is what I'm going to go over next. But any any paid invoice is not doesn't matter to disclose it. Paid, we can paid. show it on the sheet in case the um, the seller or the buyer would like that for tax purposes. Because anything on here, they're going to use that when it, when it's tax time. So if you do have something that's paid and you like it on there, you can send that to us, and we'll disclose that. Yeah. Okay. But we do. We will send this to you. Um, at least two or three days prior to closing is what we like to do. Um, so you can look it over, make sure anything is on there that you that you see, um, you want to add. Would you like to send it to you first before it goes out to the buyer? Yeah, so by that like inspection report, invoices paid or termite paid. Of the home inspection? Yeah, it's better to be added. Or yeah, then? we don't need to. I mean, if they will like it, mm -hmm. we can add it. That's no problem. Usually they don't. Yeah. Um, but if you have a seller, if you have a uh, reimbursement for the CO, any city certs, that we need a commission statement uh, because a lot of times the commission is not what's on the, con the contract. They may have uh, changed it, added a seller concession. Um, so, you know, any, any invoices you have uh, to get us to, to us sooner <coughs> rather later. And you don't have to wait for the week before closing. You can send it to us when you get it. It would be great. I understand that we're not allowed to um, have any of the things that we pay for put onto the HUD sheet to get reimbursed directly to the agent. It has to go to the company. That's how we do it here. Right, okay. Yeah. So, we, yeah, anything you have, but um, you would need to know that. <coughs> you know, you pay for the smoke detector, uh, the insulation, or anything you have uh, to get that over to us would be great. Yeah. That would be paid to the company as opposed to, to the individual. Yourself. Yeah. yeah. I yeah, think that's why the Alta. Different companies have it different ways, yeah, however they do it. Um, any questions? What happens when you have a situation that there's an attorney present at settlement? That, you know, and in other words, if the settlement gets a little bogged down, maybe he's charging you two, two and a half, three hours. How is that handled? On his fee or regarding his fee? Yeah, I mean, it, it, he's there and you can't put the request in for. Uh, you know, three days prior because you really don't know what his charges are going to be. Right. Uh, he, they, this buyer out there, or the seller out to pay him outside of closing. If we can't, at that point, we're, yeah, we're closing, sure. they can't change it. So okay. they'll have to write him a check, you know, out of their account. There you go. That's why we try and get, on that form that we send out in the beginning, asking for um, emails, uh, phone numbers, attorney. So if there's an attorney above, what we'll do is uh, five days, three days before closing, We'll send that to the attorney, the settlement sheet to the attorney, asking them if they have any uh, charges. So right. we're trying, yeah, we're trying to get that ahead of time. So they have to estimate the time then. Yeah. They'll yes, they'll, they do. They'll add if it's like an hour, they'll add that to their invoice. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but if it is not covered on the on in the closing statement, then they'll have to pay it outside yeah. of closing. Gotcha. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, the auction purchases are very popular right now, and when you purchase property online, mm -hmm. most of the time they offer their own title company, and on top of it they offer a big discount. Right. So how to convince the buyer to stick with you guys? What's the difference? I mean, the, they keep, because I was trying to convince one buyer, it wasn't possible because he still, I mean, he's right, he's saying the title insurance is the same, but uh, a lot of times they tell you it's really the discount, 
when they come, when they actually send this, the settlement statement, you don't see much of a discount. Mm -hmm. um, a, a, maybe a, a good way to convince them, uh, the companies are not usually local, mm -hmm. the buyer may have to travel, and the buyer may not want to travel far. No, they, no, don't, they don't make you travel. Anywhere. Everything's online. online. Yeah, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Not even a single every signature, everything goes. Okay. Scans and yeah, I don't know any way to. Yeah, and and it's, it's, it's tough because title insurance rates are filed rates with the state of New Jersey. Mm -hmm. They're regulated. Yeah. So we have to charge by law what the state says we have mm -hmm. to charge, even if my sister's closing tomorrow, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm always suspicious when someone does say we're discounting title rates in the state of New Jersey. They do not um, discount the title charges, mm -hmm. they discount the transaction charges. And they really do, uh, because I want to... Uh, okay, so maybe yeah. the out-of-pocket. The out of pocket. Yeah. Because their titles already was done, Yeah. so it's very it's common, common with those for options. them to, mm -hmm. if you choose them, because everything is ready. Yes. Because they prepare in advance and they have they all the do. titles done and all yes. lined up. Because we've been involved in some of those where we do an auction in Atlantic City of a couple properties where we did all the titles and then we're ready. We have everything done. Yes. We don't even have buyers' names yet, but we have all the titles done and lined up. And as soon as they put them in, we can close them one after another. It is common. And I guess that's what they're doing. They're eating some of their fees. Yes. Not the file rate so fees, but their fees. $650 mm -hmm. uh, discount. Okay. So it's significant for the buyer mm -hmm. to choose. And do you have a, a rate for you? Our rates are filed. The yeah. premium rates are filed with the state of New Jersey. No one can state. change that. Mm -hmm. um, it's as Christine was saying. It's the out of pocket, mm -hmm. um, the searches that we have to do. But they already have the search done. So I think they put that on the seller side, right? The search fee or well, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the seller pays. So that's it, you know. There's not yeah. too much, we don't have much play really on yeah. because they're filed rates. But is there any advantage of going with you guys rather than go with a company out of state? We would make the, the transaction smoother, I would, you know, that's what I would say. Um, I, you, you've dealt with them before, I don't know if you've had any issues. Oh no, actually there's no issue, thanks God, but who right. knows, what if the water was disconnected? Let's, let's say that out of state company wouldn't know that, I guess, right. and you guys would know, right? You that, know, maybe the way you told the meter and things like that. I was, wor yeah. I was like personally worried about little things, you know, like right. whether this connection, things like that, something they might not gonna know, and you guys will. You could you could tell them the title company if you you know to use us we're we're a, we're not representing the seller we're not representing the buyer we're we're providing title insurance that could be a way um, their company are they more biased for the seller that, you know what I mean that might be how many years back do you do search uh, we go back uh, sixty years sixty years because I think when I, because I did call you to figure out because they don't do I think they did only like thirty years or something. Like they may have had back title. Mm -hmm. And I was I was surprised that their numbers were different from yours. Because yours were better. But I, I it's hard for me to remember it now. I mean this purchase was like what last year in December, so right. I don't remember exactly. I would think that that might be a way of, of trying to sell it is that that the company mm -hmm. that, that you're gonna go through with title, are they more biased for the, the seller since the seller is the one, you know, providing that. I don't know any other way to really... I agree. Yeah. Plus so. another thing is a lot of times <clears throat> the sellers are the ones that did the foreclosure. Right. And so if they made a mistake, well, see, you will See, online is always bad for financial institution who, mm -hmm. who is the seller. Mm -hmm. So I would assume their paperwork should be on, on spot, but it's not necessarily. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. 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 Still I mean, uh, you would think, you right? Would think, but but yes, it's not. It's not. Right? Don't tell you, not all foreclosures are done, right? Times mm -hmm. Where they didn't name proper parties to the foreclosure, and mm -hmm. you know, we Sorry. weren't even able to insure it a lot of times because they couldn't clear it up before closing. Mm -hmm. We've had a few of those. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You could tell them that that it's. I'd be a little concerned if anything comes up a cloud later on. Well, how are you going to get a hold of it? But you have that, I'm sure. It's like, it's not like they can give it to you, they do give it to you. Well, you know, getting a hold of them and getting it resolved, who knows where you're dealing with, where, where they're at. Yeah. 
So, I mean, that would be something I'd be a little concerned with myself. I mean, I, I just understand what you're saying. Can you also tell me what happens if title insurance, not to say go out of business, but let's say closing or being bought by a different company? And what happens? Different companies. What happens if the issue comes up? What happens is it, we're, we are the, uh, we're the agent, so we have an insurance company. Uh, there's an underwriter on each file. That underwriter usually takes over the, the file or another title company. If they so it's it always someone there, right? To, the, the, yes, to yes. Go back to. Right. If there's, there's not an agent, there. yeah. Okay. It, it's perpetual. In mm -hmm. other words, if a business goes out, another business under state auspices, they pick it up. Yes. So even if you had a title insurance claim from 70 years ago, the company's long gone. There's still somebody there. Yeah. Right. The underwriter backs up the policy. And all title companies are required to post reserves for losses. So there's always a, a pool for losses that are maintained. Okay. Yes, sir. I mean, it's better kind of for us to go with you, obviously, you know, to be protected and everything. But sometimes it's so hard to convince the buyer, you know. Right. It's such a big sound is all they hear is a discount. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 It's true. Mm -hmm. So you can try that, and you know that the, the again they make mistakes. They're they're ones handling the foreclosure, and that they're really they're not. And you guys are really local, right? Like this is like we're down the street. Right? Right? Exactly. exactly. I, like, I, know. Yeah. I, I like to be able to say you can literally. Just go to the office. Right. You can deal with somebody eye to eye. Yeah. 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 Someone I like person. that. Exactly. That's, that's what I use. You can yeah. probably stress people. Yeah, and there might be some that won't, that, you know, want that discount, that's it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, what do I think we finished the um, the buyer side. Any other questions on the? So, see all of and those uh, paperwork documents. Usually, the buyer, the seller's agent, take care of these. Or was the the, CO, the, the the paperwork, you were talking about COs before, right? Mm -hmm. Of the CO? Yeah, so you just only take care of the, mm -hmm. of the invoice, but mm -hmm. who does it doesn't matter. Right. Who actually gets the... Yeah, um, who gets they, it, like who handles it? Yeah. That usually the listing agent does on the CO, right? right. right. It would be in the contract. If it's anything different, but it's usually the listing agent mm -hmm. that usually is responsible for it. If it's a bank owned, it would be the buyer, oh, right? Yeah. Um, so it would be right in the contract, yeah. I think even if it's bank owned, sometimes you don't even need to, you just need to send the waiver. It could be like assets, you're, you're, right. They don't get it, so it's right. impossible. Right. Like some, most of the bank owned properties, they have some major issue going on, it's just impossible to right. get so, yeah. So, you so if you don't have it, it yeah. yeah. If you don't have it, then you know. But if you do, commercial you tool, they don't need it. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And on the um, the seller side, so we start. That's the right hand column. Uh, we start at the top, and that's the commission. So that's going to show um, the commission to both agents. If there was a referral fee, that would be there as well. Um, so you can check that to make sure. Um, sometimes on if, it, if there's a seller concession. Um, Perhaps the commission is based on the amount after or before the, 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 commit, uh, the concession comes into play. So that's one thing you want to check that to make sure you're getting the right amount. And that would come back with the commission statement that you, gave, you guys gave us the correct commission statement. Um, and then further down in the column, so we skip down to, um, again it was a bank loan so they don't pay a, a settlement fee. We skip down to line 1102, and these are uh, charges, the first two are charges, um, first three, uh, for the bank. Um, they have a lot of their own charges for items that they, um, invoices that they have. Um, and then we skip down, there's a few for us, so a wire fee, um, and again a bunch more for the, um, the bank. Um, the, the seller on the line 1202, they pay the transfer tax. And again, that's based on the sales price of the property. Um, and the final uh, fee on there is there was a balance on this one for the um, the quarter of the sewer that we were in at the time. So, I'm sorry. So that's before it. it's all said and done, we, we get to let the seller and or buyer know how much in advance before like we get to the close of how much is it that they have to bring to the table. We try and give at least two two to three days. Mm -hmm. two we try, days. that's what we try to do. As okay. long as again it's if we have all the information from you guys, you know, right. if we have your invoices, your commit commission statement, 
the more the quicker we get things from you, the quicker we can get a sheet done and to you. A, a cash transaction is a lot easier because we don't have to go back and forth with the bank and balance do that balancing. Mm -hmm. um, so they're they're usually pretty quick. But again, if you guys can get us over everything that you have, the quicker it will be to get it to you. Okay. So do you have any other questions on the HUD? So how much is your fee in there? Um, our settlement fee is under line 1101. And on, on a cash transaction, oh, yeah, 1101, th that's a settlement fee. Um, mm -hmm. Normally, um, this is a bank transaction, transaction, so they will not pay their half. Usually it's split. So it's 400 on a cash transaction, and it's usually 200 each side. Okay. Yeah. And With uh, the mortgage, it's 250, right? Each it's side. 250, correct, yes. And who pays the title insurance? The buyer pays the title insurance, uh, insurance because that's covering them. And that's... It's like usually made, paid to you from the bank, from the lender. Uh, yeah, they, they turn it out of pocket. They, like they pay the, that. This is in the included in the closing cost from the lender, right? That the lender charge for the borrower. It will be in in with the closing costs, yes, but it's coming from the buyer's money. It's from their own pocket. Yes. Not included in the mortgage amount. Yeah. Correct. Right. Correct. Yes. And that can vary. It can house. vary, yeah. So that, it's based on the sales price of the property. How right. do you calculate that for the type of insurance? So much per thousand. So it's based on the sales price. So it's so much yeah. per thousand. So, so the, what's the percentage? The greater it is. There's a base price. We have a, a rate chart and then calculator online you, that you can just yeah. go on and put it in there to get a, an estimate of it. You still pay that for refinance? I'm sorry? If you do refinance. Yes, you pay title insurance again okay. based on the new loan amount. And recording fee always the same because it's recording Yeah, the they're always different because um, they're, we go by pages um, so for the deed and the mortgage. So it depends on how many page, you know, pages we have to record. Um, deed, usually you're pretty close. There's not too many um, pages that are different on that. The mortgage, it all depends. The lender may have um, three uh, endorsements or uh, riders to attach. Um, if it's an adjustable rate mortgage, if it's a second home, they have different riders they attach, so that um, that varies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's always on, uh, from the buyer side, right? Yes, they pay for the seller pays for the deed preparation, the uh, buyer pays for the deed recording. Yeah. That's what I have to. Make I'll show sure. you on the next one. That that the next form, which is the Ulta, that shows all the fees with the lender. This is for them for a mortgage. So that's mm -hmm. that's the next three pages. So sell the deed Correct. And then the um, buyer pays to record the deed. Okay, and, then, and on the next one, that's the Alta. So that's this form here. And that's the form if there's a mortgage company involved. Uh, the form that gets sent to the uh, buyer three days prior to closing, that's called the closing disclosure. And um, that's the form that we all go back and forth with the lender until we balance. And, but you, you're you not privy to the CD. That's, that go, this close disclosure goes right to the buyer themselves. The ALTA is what you will see. And this form is a little different than the HUD that we went over. It's showing different columns, but over to the left on the first page, it shows that's the uh, seller's column, and then over to the right is the buyer's. And it's, a, it's sort of the same setup where it shows credits and debits. So starting at the top on the seller side, which is the left-hand column, it starts with the sales price of the property. And then we're going to go through with the um, adjustments for the taxes. And this on this one, they're showing oil. So that's another item if you have an oil tank or a paint tank. Um, we would need that reading as soon as possible to get that on here. So that's another item you guys can send us uh, because we show that on here to give the seller back the money for the the oil that's in the tank. Um, the next fee, um, you might not see uh, too often, we're starting with them around this time, it's the homestead rebate. So what happens is the seller um, is entitled to a homestead rebate. That amount comes off of the yearly tax. So for the yearly tax for 2018, say they receive $250 off their taxes for homestead rebate. The adjustment that we use for the settlement sheet for taxes is showing that amount that was reduced. So what we have to do is reimburse the seller because 
they should be entitled that money back because it's for the seller. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're showing on here a homestead rebate reimbursement. Do you got any questions on that? Okay, because that may be an item your buyer may question um, why there's a, a homestead rebate, but that's why because it's, he's, been, he's had his taxes reduced. Now he has to give that back to the seller. Is, um, that, is that for the year, Deb? That is for the year, yes. So, because you have the same date of places here, right? So right. We're just we calculate the amount. Um, the, the tax office gives us the amount that was reduced for the year, and that's why we're just showing that that's the amount that was reduced for the full year for 2018. Okay. Yeah. Even if they sell it within, because they always pay ahead of time, right? They, they pay it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So that's for the fine. next year, they'll fill out application. Right. 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 Yeah. Um, and so we, that's the column for the seller. We flip to the next page. And on that, on that column to the left, we're showing the debit. So that's all the seller's charges, which um, on this one, there's a wire fee. They had a payoff that we had to send out, so we wire the money. Uh, a release fee, which is a fee for us to obtain the payoff. The settlement fee. So on this uh, settlement, the closing was out of the office, and it's a little bit higher. It's 262.50. But on a normal transaction, it's 250. Um, further down is the commission, and then we flip over to the third page, which has a couple more different um, invoices for the seller. So we show the transfer tax, which again is based on the sales price of the property. There's the payoff amount to notarize the papers. On this one, there was an inheritance tax. This was an estate, so uh, we had to hold money. The seller had to pay inheritance tax, but they, they didn't know how much at the time. So we had to hold money in escrow to make sure that um, if once they found out how much it was, we would pay it back um, or pay it off. The D preparation is the next day. And then this one had a credit. So where on the HUD, it shows on the first page if there was a credit. On the ULTA, it shows on the last page. So that would be a seller concession that was on the contract. And then down in the bottom is the same sort of um, setup as the HUD, where we subtract one from the other, the debits versus the credits. And it's a little different. In the middle is the 21434 That's the amount that went back to the seller. Any questions on the seller side? Okay, so if we flip back over to the first page, um, we show the buyers. So we start at the top and there's a, a debit, which is the sales price of the property. And they're gonna have a credit, which is the loan amount. There, down further, we show the um, adjustments for the taxes and the oil. So it goes from one side to another is what happens from the seller side to the buyer side. Um, now we show the lender's charges. So on this one, they had origination, they had points and different lender's fees. And over to the second page, there's a few more fees for the lender, so they had um, their escrows. We start then with the title insurance. So on title insurance, where on the HUD it lumps everything together, on an Ulta it breaks down every single fee that we charge. So they are disclosed the amounts. And further down on the bottom on that we uh, go over the recording fees. So again the buyer pays for the recording of the deed and they pay for the recording of the mortgage. So they're the two last fees. And we flip to the third page. The one fee on here would be the debit for the uh, insurance, the homeowner's insurance, and then the credit for the uh, rate on this. And the same sort of setup here, we subtract one from the other and come up with the amount, which is again in the middle, and that's the amount that's due from the buyer, which would be again a certified or cashier's check or a wire. Do you guys have any questions? That's, that's not including the mortgage? That is including That's the mortgage. The mortgage. Okay. That okay. would be after the mortgage, yes. And what would they have to bring out of pocket for this? The eleven thousand? They would have to bring eleven thousand eight seventy seven. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Can I ask you a question regarding the buy all um, no. the seller concession? Okay. Because sometimes like I had a sale when the seller concession was really, really high, over than ten thousand dollars. Okay. Uh, what happened to the uh, fees for the uh, realtors? Because uh, are you guys charging the three percent 
on the total sale price minus the seller concession, or it's need to be in a contract in order you, for yes. you to do that. Yes, what you should do if... Because some, the only reason I'm asking is because when it's just a thousand dollars, it's not significant. When it's higher, then it is, can be quite significant right. for, the, for the seller. It should be either in your contract or if you do an addendum. Mm -hmm. Or just an addendum, but it should be written. It right? should read you it don't because do that automatically. Correct, because then you you know there's gonna be discrepancy between the listing agent. The listing agent might want their their seller might want to have the different you know have it cheaper. So it, the buyer, the selling agent, might not be as happy when their commissions yeah, reduced. Yeah, but when you think just logically, that's the only right way to do it. Because seller concession, it's always you consider it's like a cash. Right. It's um. Uh, yeah, we really they don't get that. Money. We really don't get into come into play with the commission. That's up to you. You know, mm -hmm. with your buyer and the seller. Usually, a uh, commission is paid for the full price unless it's mentioned somewhere else. Right. It's not, not commission. Yeah. So it should be listed. So there's no questioning. Because you're going to get to the point where you're close to closing or you're at the closing table and there's a big discrepancy and, and people so aren't happy. So the surety type will make me write that down too. Uh, you should have an addendum, yes. yes. You should have an yeah. addendum between you as a seller and the buyer because, as I said, it's, it's smarter to have that with the net. Mm -hmm. this, that Concession should come off the selling price. It should when you. But you should get that in, in writing with the addendum between the seller, agent, and the buying agent. Yes, I met another agent who told me that another title company does it automatically. It doesn't have to be written. So yeah, well, it should be written. Yeah, you know, it should have something to cover yourself. That that's yeah. the best way. Because we don't want them to come back to us and, and sure. you know we, we don't make the decision. It's yeah. it's something. That and so with that said, make sure you look at the sheet because you'd be surprised how many times after closing an agent may call up and say the commission's incorrect. Yeah. And when we say you, oh you, you didn't look at the sheet, and I say no, I didn't look at the sheet. So it's the way you get paid. I would always make sure that you look at that sheet yeah, at it's, closing. Yeah, it's better to change with the seller or make sure you understand he's paying for the yes. price. I mean, no one would really need. You don't want to surprise the table. Amount. No, I mean, yeah. We want to make it a smooth and a happy transaction when they come to the settlement table. That's the day they're going to house. We want to make it as happy. Um, as we can make it. So we don't, we try not to have any issues. We want, you know, everything to go smoothly. And that's what we sh we're, we're going over this with you guys so that we can. We want to have it uh, be a happy transaction for your purchaser and yourself. And also, while a uh, buyer and seller sign the contract, you already start in the paperwork. You collect the chip, you already start working on the, uh, on the title. Mm -hmm. Then you sometimes you send the, uh, like a draft of it, but then sometimes contract doesn't go through, and you don't charge anything for it, right? Uh, we you try to you know. That's a good thing about our relationship yeah. with it. Because with I see you don't, but I was I always think that you did so much work. Mm -hmm. Well, we do because we do pay several hundred dollars to people that don't work at our company to get the title search done. We pay the courthouse, we pay the state for their search, we pay the municipality for their searches. Mm -hmm. So once we conduct that title search, we are out several hundred dollars, whether it cancels or not. Mm -hmm. um, Deb and I were just talking about you know ways to curtail the cancellation rate. We'll talk maybe more about that in another session about waiting till after the home inspection is done or whatever ways that we could cut back. We did have a high cancellation rate appraisal last month. Appraisal is usually the most uh, scary part, like appraisal. Yes. And that's usually done after. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it just can't be helped. It's so far down the road. And if it's down the, so far down the road, and it's from our customer here, Keller Williams, we're not going to charge the buyer. So you, you won't. We're going to eat that cost. I mean, that's a good thing about this partnership and what we're trying to accomplish is the relationships here. And it's always a great idea for every real estate agent to have a go-to person at the title company, where it, whether it's the manager and the closing officer or one of the processors there. It's great to have that go-to person. And your closing officer over the years, as he or she works with you, they know what you like, what you don't like. They know whether you want to go over the closing statement at the table or you would like them to go over it. They just know you get a feel for each other. and. You kind of know, and they would never embarrass you at the table if something wasn't done or missing. You know, you develop that like any other relationship. It's a really important relationship because you want, even though the title company is conducting your closing, when things go bad, 
it reflects on you because you referred your customer to the title company. So we want it to go well. We want it to be a professional and as Debbie said, a pleasant experience and to reflect on you because we know you work on referrals. So we want someone to say, I had a great closing, you know, with my realtor and her title company. We want that because just like you, if something doesn't close, we don't get paid. So we, we want, we have the same goal, you know. I've had so, a couple of instances where the banks counted back and the buyer walked away yeah. on the bank sales and that's where you're eating the the paperwork. Right. Yeah. It's not the buyer's fault. It's right. Just Sometimes it isn't, right. Man, I, most times it's not. Yeah. I have one uh, one question that's come up in the past where I had to do something. Um, the home inspection comes up and it says uh, there's a pool. Mm -hmm. It's winter time. They cannot check the pool. Right. So I've negotiated with the seller to escrow an X amount of dollars okay. to be held aside so when it warms up that they can come in and have the pool inspected and recover the repairs. Okay. How is that handled with the altar now? I mean, yeah, with, with TRID now, yeah. we are not able to hold an escrow um, unless it's title related, which in that case it's not title related. Um, they won't allow it. Our underwriters uh, don't want us holding money. Um, we try at least once a week. <laughs> yeah. you think you're not gonna no, I mean, it's a common area. Yep. I've seen that a number of times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What we've done to uh, help out in that situation, because you, you, you need something, you need help there. Uh, what we'll do is we would add something um, to the settlement statement to uh, Joe's pool repair. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, $1,000. Yeah. And what we'll do is we have to cut the check. We will give the check to the listing agent, the selling agent, whatever has been, you know, agreed upon. Um, they would hold the check until it's time to check on the pool. Um, if the or so you always use the aim higher. If the repairs come in at eight hundred dollars, they bring the check back. We cut eight hundred dollars to Joe's auto uh, pool repair, and the two hundred dollars goes back to the seller. If that's what's agreed upon. Which is the same. <coughs> It's the same thing, but they won't allow us to hold escrows and uh, get involved in it. And if there's an attorney involved, they'll, uh, they'll, they'll hold the money, uh, make it a lot easier because, you know, our hands are tied. We can't, we can't hold money. So we'd have to get something in writing you guys to, for yourself for the check to be to cut to the, to the repair <laughs> individual. Yeah. That would be something that you, for you, to cover you the buyer, seller, and, and yourselves. Again, that we'd have to do. Okay. Yeah, but it's you won't find. Uh, usually, title companies in the area, same thing. Their underwriters will not allow them to hold escrow unless it's title related. And for commercial deals, like, is there like a more document required paperwork for you for commercial? For commercial? Uh, there's there's quite a bit up front. Um, that closing, no, not so much less, because less. the bank is usually there. They they go over the papers. Um, but there's quite a bit up front, which would be done and, and processors and um, to make sure everything is correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little bit of a different animal from a title mm -hmm. point of view. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have any other questions? No. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.